it is the first of a multi-part educational series that we're doing uh, with SWIFT. Uh, and it also brings into context the investments that we've already made and how to leverage that. So we're going to be talking about ISO 20022 and how it impacts the bank, uh, how to continuously evolve and uh, get the maximum out of an API-led strategy and uh, how to future-proof investments like blockchain connectivity uh, and, of course, GPI. Hello and welcome to Fenextra TV's Thought Leadership Series. I'm Hannah Wallace and kindly joining us on the call today is Jeffrey Edison, Global Solutions Lead Banking and Sriang Kaur, Global Products Strategy Payments at Oracle Financial Services. Hello to the both of you. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Anna. Now, today we're going to be talking about cross-border payments, which is undergoing um, a massive transformation globally and in turn pushing SWIFT's broader payments and modernization strategy forward. We're going to be touching on GPI universal confirmations taking effect this November, followed by ISO 2022, and how banks and the stakeholders are positioned to address these changes. So, Sriyank, I'm going to come to you first and ask um, how you're seeing the industry reacting to the unfolding payments landscape and what are some of the challenges banks are grappling with today? I think with uh, SWIFT's announcement of a deadline push for ISO 2002 to adoption, uh, the reactions have been mixed. Uh, the larger tier one banks who are already invested in the ISO 2002 modernization program, they're going to be the early adopters. Uh, they're going to be uh, the ones who actually uh, benefit from the overall uh, uh, modernization program way earlier than the rest of the industry. And the way, uh, you know, the entire banking community looked at ISO 2022 uh, uh, way back in January and the way they look at it in mid-May post the entire pandemic crisis is very different. So I think uh, in terms of regional uh, uh, banks, uh, smaller and mid-tier banks, the, there are very fundamental questions that are coming out. Uh, how do we go about it? What do we factor in? What is the scope? And do we need to just you know, align and uh, make a change at the messaging layer and align uh, to the deadline? Or do we treat it as as that one-time opportunity to completely transform uh, the payments ecosystem? And I think that's where tech vendors like us uh, come in. And uh, uh, we're in a position and poised at this uh, current moment uh, to distribute our technology investments that we have made in the past four or five years to the larger customer base and community and, and seamlessly trans, uh, transition them uh, towards the ISO 2022 modernization program. That's interesting. And Jeffrey, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, well, as, as Sri Yonk has alluded to, I mean, the, the, the scope of the changes is really enormous and, and we focus a lot on how it's affecting the banks, but it, it you know, it really goes across the entire payment value chain. There's n uh, numerous points of change that are going to be impacted by, by ISO. Yeah, the messaging at the SWIFT level is certainly important and, and significant. Uh, but when we look at it in the bigger picture, you know, this, this, this affects the entire payment value chain. And, and that's, I think, the challenge that banks have is to see how can they adapt to this change in a transformational way rather than just a tactical solution to deal with the swift change in the short term. All right, and Sriyanka, do you think the payments modernization should drive organizational and cultural change alongside system overhaul? Absolutely, and I think that's a very powerful question, Hannah, because uh, payments modernization is about continuously innovating the end customer's uh, payments journey, and it's about the willingness of the bank to continuously innovate while retaining the X factor and uh, the customer stickiness in a very federated payment stream. Having said that, the, the cultural shift is closer to home and uh, within the bank, because when we talk about payments modernization, we're talking about process centralization and centralization of payments data. In both these cases, it means teams need to be restructured, uh, process flows need to be redefined, and SLAs need to be uh, you know, looked at in a completely different way because these are going to be data-led. Decisions are going to be data-led. So the cultural shift in the way we design the future 
of uh, managing payments uh, for our customers for tomorrow um, starts with the fundamental question of what and how we design it today within the bank. Interesting. And Jeffrey? Yeah, and, and, and I think um, I, I would add that, uh, as Sriyanka alluded to, it goes beyond what's happening in the banks. Um, it, it, you know, it's these front-to-back customer experiences that need to be looked at. Um, currently, when a, a customer, if a customer is able to initiate a payment out of their ERP systems with in this data-rich ISO 20022 format, when it's a cross-border payment, all that additional data is lost. Um, and as we move towards the ISO world of, of SWIFT, then that information can actually flow through the entire payment value chain. So it'll have a cultural or organizational impact, again, front to back, from the corporate, through the banks, to the, the final beneficiary of the transaction, whoever that might be. So it's, again, going back to what Sriyanka said in earlier, it's not just about the messaging. Yeah, the messaging is a conduit to pull that information through, but it's going to have an impact really across the, the spectrum. All right, well, following on from that quite nicely then, what's your view on uh, banks' appetite to invest in payments modernization in today's global environment then, Sriyanka? I think, um, you know, uh, from uh, January and, and, and between mid-May, the focus has shifted. We've seen payments being an area of top spend over the years for the banks, and it was so earlier this year. But with the current economic situation, the priority of banks has shifted elsewhere, and rightly so. Uh, however, the deadlines are not going away. And uh, on top of all of this, there is a spike in digital transactions. Uh, and, and, uh, and the banks are trying to do justice uh, to onboarding, creating digital authentication, combating the uh, risk and fraud uh, that arise from these uh, digital transactions, all of that. And uh, at the same time, the ISO 2022 modernization programs, which are driven uh, collectively by the in the industry and is a collaborative program, um, that that's not going away anywhere. So I think, you know, technology vendors have to step up uh, their game here and uh, you know do justice to the banks. Mm. Jeffrey. Yeah, and I think it, it it's an important point. I mean that uh, the. the impact of, of this ISO 2022 migration, I mean, it, there's, it's enormous. It's, uh, there's going to be a lot of heavy lifting that's required of the banks. There's going to be a lot of investment that's required. And if each bank were to make that investment themselves, it's, a ve it's very challenging in, in the current economic environment. Whereas if you can spread that across numerous banks, for example, across a product base or user base, uh, it's a lot easier for a stomach for the banks to stomach that sort of cost. Mm. Um, and one other point that Sriyanka and I have discussed around this is we strongly believe that the, the you know the, the winners are going to be the early adopters. They can maximize their return on investment by being by being ready from the start, uh, rather than the the laggards who are coming around in you know 2024, 2025. Uh, waiting as long as they can uh, to, to actually implement these, these important changes. Uh, they're the ones who are going to suffer. And, and yes, they'll have a return on investment because it's a, a regulatory change, uh, mm -hmm. but they'll have to wait for that return on investment much longer. Mm. Well, as you say, uh, entering some uh, uncertain economic times as well. So some interesting developments ahead, I think it's safe to say. Um, and now finally, I understand you have a webinar with SWIFT coming up around universal confirmations. Um, could you highlight for us what you're hoping to get out to those tuning in? So uh, universal confirmations lays the foundation for uh, the global cross-border payments of tomorrow. And uh, we at Oracle strongly believe in the GPI vision and we are heavily invested in it. And um, I think this webinar aims to uh, simply uh, tell the how to do it, how to go about it uh, for uh, banks who uh, need to meet the deadlines. It is the first of a uh, multi-part educational series that we're doing uh, with SWIFT. Uh, and it also brings into context the investments that we've already made and how to leverage that. So we're going to be talking about ISO 20022 and how it impacts the bank. 
uh, how to continuously evolve and uh, get the maximum out of an API-led strategy and uh, how to future-proof investments like blockchain connectivity uh, and, of course, GPI. So these are some of the webinars that would come up in due course, and we're looking uh, forward to our customer community tuning in and the entire banking industry uh, getting the best out of it. So that's it. Brilliant. Jeffrey? Yeah, well, I, I would only add, a, 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 you know, to, to reiterate what Trianka said, I think it, it's uh, to make sure that the banks understand what these changes are going to mean for them, how they can react, and potentially how, how Oracle is, is, can help them in this space. Whether mm -hmm. they choose to work with us or someone else, they can still, it, it's an educational thing. It's not a, it's not a sales uh, pitch. So we're trying to make sure that people understand what's going on in the industry, what the various deadlines are as they're, um, they have often been changing in the last month. Brilliant. Well, thank you for summarizing there and sharing your insights today, both of you, um, and joining us on the call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah.